YouTube, what is going on? Crowder here, and I'm bringing you guys a brand new video. Today's video is going to be a very basic settings video, and now before you guys criticize or, you know, say this setting's better than this setting and all of that stuff, this is not the most optimal settings thing. I have not gone to some of the best of the best yet to give you guys those, but I have been averaging about 200 plus FPS right now with these settings, and it's been really, really good. A lot of people in my Twitch chat have been asking for them, so I'm going to drop this video for you guys just to kind of give you a nice head start on some of the best settings that you can have for FPS and all of that. I will give you updated videos of better settings, and the more I know, the more you guys will know, I promise you. But I do have a video scheduled for every single day of this week. So if you guys are not subscribed to the channel, make sure you guys do. We have how to have better movement, how to have better aim. We have so much things coming to this channel that will help you guys be the best MW2 players you can be. So we're going to get right into this video. I'm going to show you guys the basic settings that I have. I'll show you the FPS that I've been rocking with. And honestly, I've been rocking a lot of FPS compared to a lot of people that have been saying uh, they kind of have a similar build to me, and it's not not really working as much i'm not too sure why but i'll give you guys what i got and hopefully it helps you guys out all right so there are a lot of settings in this game and i'm going to kind of just go through them pretty quickly for you not go too super in depth like i was just saying but first is the quick settings i have my master volume the 76 uh usually it's i control everything with my go xlr and all that stuff so that's kind of all preference and then i play on a controller obviously the quick settings to show you like your aiming stuff but we'll get to that in the controller settings and all this stuff i play in full screen get a lot more fps if you play in full screen so that's super super important and then for brightness i play on 65 um you can kind of go you know whatever monitor you have and what's better for you again Again, that's a lot of preference that doesn't really matter too much all of this stuff is just a quick settings it's not really that big of a deal i do play on 120 but we will get there in the future ones first of all and probably the most important for a lot of you guys that are watching this video controller settings and there are a lot of new settings and a lot of similar settings from the previous call of duties but these settings are the most important especially if you're a controller player and i'm going to explain to you some of them uh it's pretty pretty easy and then i'll give you an explanation of the dead zones and stuff too just to make sure you guys have that all set here for the aiming input device we play controller I play on tactical. I do not play flipped. A lot of these are preference, but this is exactly what I play on. Right now, I'm playing 6-6, six, six, and I'm playing 0.8 multiplier. If you do 6 times 0.8, it's around 4.8, which is, you know, rounding it up to, like, 5 sensitivity when you're aimed down sight. Uh, I've been liking it for this game a lot. Considering there's not a lot of fast moving and not a lot of sliding, I don't think you need to play on a crazier sense. I played on a much faster sense in Warzone. That's because everyone was sliding around and going all crazy. So right now, I'm liking this sensitivity a lot. I've been beaming people. Uh, everything's been working out for me, so I definitely recommend trying this. Then we go to the sensitivity multipliers. All of these are going to be at 1. I don't touch any of these. The vertical aims... Uh, stuff right now i'm not doing either i'm just leaving those completely uh the same standard and then aim down sight behavior is hold when i come out with the movement video there's not crazy movements but just like you know how to use your movement a little bit better to be better at call of duty i actually do like auto tactical sprint but you can get definitely get away this year without playing with it so it's totally up to you uh, i've been using auto tactical sprint and that might change here in the future but as of now i actually do like it uh you know that could change definitely soon and then equipment behavior mount behavior and all this stuff is all very and then moving to the advanced settings really quick. These are the important ones that I was just talking about. So what a lot of people don't know right now is that you can change your aim assist type. And the aim assist type is very interesting. Uh, you can kind of read what they all say on the right side here. But I think the Black Ops one is by far the best aim assist right now, considering it's very sticky. It's very good when you're obviously aiming at people. It's very hard to get your aim off the people. It's basically aiming for you, which is very, very nice. Shout out controller players. That is what I've been using. A lot of the pro players have been using that as well. As you guys know, I'm the head coach of Atlanta Phase and a lot of the pro players. I have is they have conversations with when it comes to simp abz and all those guys and these are what uh these are the settings that a lot of you guys are playing on uh, again that could change soon but as of now the wave is black ops aim assist trust me try it out i think you will love it and then of course moving to the aiming response curve type i play on dynamic a lot of people seem to play on it too you can kind of go through them if you really really want it's either standard or dynamic i don't really recommend linear for a lot of people but uh i would just do dynamic most pros play on it i think it's really really good and when i do the aiming video i'll explain that a little bit more right now we're on dynamic and then you kind of just go down from there i didn't change too much here and then if you scroll down you have all of these other settings right here right now i have the double tap just because i play on auto tactical sprint that doesn't really matter uh i do have the automatic airborne on partial which is really important to have and then i do have the auto ground mantle off i do not like auto mantling on stuff that is like right in front of you or you do it on accident a lot so i don't recommend that and then you kind of keep going down here invert slide and dive behavior that's if you want to have tap to slide this is the tap to slide feature uh i like it at standard if you can read on the top right right here it says tap to slide hold the dive that is way better in my opinion although you don't use those movements too much i still do think they come in handy here and there and that's what i actually prefer 
Reaper. And then everything else is pretty good. Uh, sprinting door bash is definitely important. You want to have that on. And then scrolling through here, there's nothing else that's too crazy. Uh, you can have the quick detonation of C4. I don't really use C4, so it doesn't really, you know, like that's not a big deal. Uh, and then everything else, if I'm correct, is normal. So that's the controller settings. Those are really important. And the important ones are obviously the Black Ops aim assist. I do think that's really important. Again, I know I've said that like three times now, but I'm telling you, try it out. I think it'll help you a lot. Now over to the graphic settings. I've been getting a lot of FPS, uh, a pretty crazy amount right now uh, in this game. And I play on a 360 hertz monitor. I do play a 1080p as well. But these are the settings that I have right now. I'm just going to scroll through these. I'm not going to talk too much because I'm not a super expert when it comes to this stuff. But I have been getting a lot of FPS. My game looks still incredible to me. I think it looks really, really good. The stream thinks it looks really, really good. And yeah, so this is what we're rocking right now. We are rocking the full screen exclusive 360 hertz uh, refresh rate. 1080p and then going down here i'm just going to scroll through the rest of them and let you guys uh, give a look if i do think any of them are important i will obviously explain some of them though Okay, so I know a lot of people are talking about field of view, and that is one of the more important ones, in my opinion, especially for when it comes to recoil control, visual recoil, and all that stuff. I do play on 120. I actually do like the 120 a lot. I think this is very important to play on, in my opinion. And even in multiplayer, I was actually kind of not a fan of the 120 in multiplayer when it was the beta. I think this game, they made it a lot easier to see. But right now, I'm on 120, and I do love it. I'll let you guys know what pro players are on. They're usually, they're on something a little bit lower than 120, around like 110. I'll give you all the updates as we obviously learn more. And then the most important one, though, that I do think people do overlook is the weapon field of view. If you have the weapon field of view on default, it will look obviously just like kind of the default weapon view that you've probably been using right now. But if you change this to wide and you have affected ADS field of view with 120, the visual recoil is basically going to completely go away. It's going to make your guns have a lot less recoil and it's going to be very much easier to control a lot of the weapons that you shoot. A lot of people do come into my stream and they ask me, you know, why does it look like the guns do not have a lot of recoil? It is because these settings specifically make it very easy to get rid of the visual recoil that a lot of people deal with and then make it very easy to control so those are very important and then the last one that is also very important that i will explain is the first person camera movement this is the camera shake movement when you're doing everything in the game and the camera is like shaking around and it's kind of like makes people get like motion sickness and stuff i don't know i don't like it on at all i don't even know why this is an option i think personally speaking it should just completely go away and it should just be always set to this but if you do not have this set i didn't have this set in the beta at first and oh my god Gosh, this is a game changer. You want to go to the first person camera movement. And instead of it being at 100, you take it all the way down to 50. This will help you guys so much, especially with the annoying visual shake and all that other stuff that comes along with this game. This game is incredible. I have been having a lot of fun, but some of that stuff is annoying. You can get rid of a lot of it by just doing exactly what I said. So those are the really important settings, in my opinion, and everything else is really good just for your FPS to just be a tad bit higher. Now, moving on to the audio settings. Here's the audio settings. This is nothing too crazy. I'm just going to scroll through them for you again. And then the last one is interface. There is something that is pretty cool on this one that I will show you and I'll explain it a little bit and I'll go way more in depth when I do the how to aim better and stuff and all that video for you. Minimap should be on square and it should rotate. That is what every single pro player plays on. It makes it much easier to understand your minimap. And if you do not know what your minimap is or you don't think it's that important, we're going to talk about that in a future video because that's the most important thing you have in Call of Duty. But for now, all this stuff is obviously crosshairs and all the damage based hit markers if you really don't like some of this i don't know why you would you could take it off but i leave all this stuff on but the one thing that's really cool that i think people um overlook right now is the center dot i actually have this on it is a dot placed in the middle of your screen that never goes away and that is really good for your centering which we'll obviously revisit in another video probably coming in the next one or two or three days but i actually have this on i think it's really good for your centering and a lot of my friends have it on too uh and then you can obviously make that dot larger or largest and that might be better for some people 
people too. I'm not too sure, but I'll explain a lot of it when we go a little bit more into the in-depth videos. But yeah, that is the rest of my settings for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. I will keep these settings videos updated as well for you as the year goes on. So you guys always have the best in up-to-date settings. If something does change, I will change them for you. I will re-upload the video, even if it doesn't do that well, just so you guys are always up to date and have the best settings that you can possibly have with the most FPS. Drop a like, leave a subscription on the channel, and I will be uploading every single day for you guys. So make sure you guys revisit the channel tomorrow. I'll see you guys then. Peace out.